Okay, folks, so whenever you hear me say, Knights of the Rep Table, I need you to put your sword up in the air, right? Just hold your hand up straight like that, like you've got your sword up in the air, and say, Unite! All right? And then I just need you to pause and listen up, okay? You ready? Let's give it a go. Knights of the Rep Table, Unite! Knights of the Rep Table, Unite! Brilliant stuff, folks. How's it going? It's Pat here from Asphalt Green's Recess Enhancement Program. I'm here with another instructional video for you, this time for our game, Knights of the Rep Table. Now, before we hop into the overview of the game, it's important that we start off the way we always do, and that is with the safety check. So, before we start any game and after we finish any game, we always want to make sure that we and our students are washing our hands with soap and water for at least 20 seconds. We also want to make sure that at no point during the game are anybody's hands going anywhere near their faces, okay? If anybody ever has to cough or sneeze, well, you can just encourage them to dab so that they're coughing or sneezing into their elbow rather than out into the world at large, okay? And we always, always, always want to make sure that everyone is at least six feet apart so that everyone is properly social distanced at all times. Now, if you've completed your safety check and you're feeling great about safety today, all right, just throw your sword up into the air, say, unite, and we'll get started on the overview. Seems like we've got a few eager knights to be out there. So as mentioned, the name of the game is Knights of the Rep Table. What's the name of the game? Oh, I'm sorry, I can't hear you over the town crier. They're always so loud. That, that's right, the name of the game is Knights of the Rep Table. Now, this is a great game for students in kindergarten up through fifth grade, or students within that age range or ability level range. Now, when thinking about where to play this game, well, there's a few things you need to take into consideration. This is one of our games that has stations and each station is going to have a different Knights of the Rep Table activity attached to it. During the game, students will be rotating from station to station, performing all of the different activities, and they'll keep doing this until the game comes to an end. Now we have eight activities for you, which means that you can set up up to eight stations. And when you're setting up your stations, we would recommend that they are large enough to allow for two or three students to perform the designated activity while remaining at least six feet apart from every other student at that station, okay? And that's kind of our recommended limit, all right? We don't think any station should be bigger than having two or three students at it. So with all of that in mind, I want you to think about where you can play this game safely, okay? Maybe you have a giant playground and you're like, I can fit all eight stations and if I wanted to add more, I could, and everyone's gonna be properly social distanced at all times. Fantastic, go for it. But maybe you have a hallway and you're like, I don't think I can fit eight, but I might be able to fit three or four, then do it, okay? This game is adjustable. You can set up up to eight stations, but if you, can, if you only have space for four, then set up four, all right? The key thing here is safety, all right? And besides, you know your space better than us, you know your students better than us, so however you can play this game safely, just go for it. Speaking of safety, no student will need to touch the same item as any other student during this game. All activities can be performed without any equipment. The only equipment that's going to be used will be equipment that's used to mark off the different boundaries and mark off the different stations, okay? so. We have safety covered in this game, as we always do in our rep games, right? So, I always like to think that fun is a byproduct of safety, so Knights of the Rep Table is guaranteed to be a blast, all right? But let's get into the details of the game so I can show you why it's going to be a blast. And as we always do whenever discussing the details of a game, we rep it out. So, we'll start with R, ready, and talk a little bit about how we can get ready for Knights of the Rep Table. So, the first thing you're going to want to do in order to get ready for Knights of the Rep Table is map out your play space and designate your boundaries. As mentioned, this game is going to have stations and each station should be big enough so that two or three students can perform the designated activity while remaining at least six feet apart from every other student at that station, okay? So I want you to take a look at your play space and think to yourself, how many stations can I safely fit here, okay? Once you have that number, 
I want you to visualize where the boundaries for each of your activity stations will be. After you've done that, I want you to move into a safety suite and you can remove any items in the play space that might pose a safety risk to you or your students while the game is going on, and you can have a think about how you're gonna work around any items that maybe can't be moved. Once you've finished your safety sweep, you can then begin to lay out equipment. You can use cones or tape to mark off the boundaries for each activity station, and then you can grab individual cones and task tents to put over those cones equal to the number of stations you have. You'll then put these cones and task tents at each individual station, and you wanna make them visible so that students can see them when they reach their station, okay? Inside these task tents, you will then insert the Knights of the Rep Table activity sheets, okay? And those you can find on our website. These activity sheets are going to have the name of the activity, instructions for how to complete that activity, and then an illustration showing what that activity should look like, okay? What might also be helpful for you will be numbering each station, okay? So if you have five stations, you're gonna put out five task tents with five activity sheets, pick your favorite five, or pick your student's favorite five, and then you're gonna just put out one, two, three, four, and five. Mark them in some way so students know where to rotate while the game is going on. So once you have everything set up, just give yourself some time to look over the entire play space See how you feel about it, and if you're feeling good, well, then you can have the students gather up around you, standing at least six feet apart from one another, okay? And then you can use the attention grabber that I used at the beginning of this video to help you do that, all right? So, Knights of the Rep Table, unite! Knights of the Rep Table, unite! And then once you have all the students' attention, you just ask them to gather on up and stand six feet apart from one another, and then you're ready to hop into E. Explain. Now, when explaining a game, it's always important to use a loud and clear voice. That way, all students can hear you and understand you. You also want to make sure that you're asking students specific questions about the instructions you're giving while you're giving them. That way, you can check for understanding and clarify anything that maybe you weren't super clear on. A question we would suggest you ask your students when explaining this game would be, well, how long do you have at every station? Now, that'll make a little bit more sense as we talk through the instructions for the game. So I'm gonna do that now. And if you haven't already, how about you head to our website, download the instructions for Knights of the Rep Table, as well as the activity sheets for Knights of the Rep Table, and then you can follow along. So the first rule of Knights of the Rep Table is something that you've already had students do, and that is to gather on up and stand six feet apart from one another. Once students have gathered though, you can begin the game by launching into a bit of a story, okay? So here's an example of what that can look like. Hello, fellow knights. It is I, Knight Coach. And I have a feeling that I see in front of me some promising recruits for the rep table. That's right, the rep table. The greatest table of knights in all of the land. Now. Like I said, I think I see some promising recruits here, but I need to know if you are worthy. And so I have a few tasks for you to complete, and then we will see if you're ready to join the rep table. After completing your introduction, you can have students point to every station in the room. You can explain to them that each station is a different night training ground and that each training ground is going to have a different nightly activity for them to practice, okay? You can explain that they will know which activity they are to practice by looking for the task tent at each station. And you can say that in that task tent, there will be an activity sheet that will have the name of the activity, the instructions for how to complete it, and then an illustration showing what the activity should look like. You can explain to students that they will have 60 seconds at each station and then they will rotate after those 60 seconds are up to the next station. And they'll know which station to rotate to by looking at the numbers. So if they're at station one, they'll rotate to station two and so on and so forth, okay? You can then tell them that they will know when those 60 seconds are up and that it's time to rotate when you say, Knights of the Rep Table, because they will know that they need to freeze, put their sword up in the air and say, unite, and then listen up, okay? So that can be your call for them to rotate on, all right? Now, it'll be super important 
to tell them that there should never be more than two or three of them at any given station at any given time, and that they should always remain at least six feet apart from one another whenever they're at a station, okay? Once students have gone through one full rotation, if you feel like you wanna end the game there, go on ahead. But if you wanna do two rotations, or if you wanna put a time limit, whatever it is, you just go for it. But once the game ends, you've decided the game is coming to a close, then you can have all the students gather on up again, standing six feet apart from one another, and you can congratulate them for completing the training and showing that they can join the Knights of the Rep table. And then you can welcome them to the Knights of the Rep table and have a little night dance party to celebrate what they've accomplished, okay? And that is Knights of the Rep table. So that's an explanation of Knights of the Rep table. So how about now we move on to the final portion of the Rep model, P, play, and talk a little bit about how we can play the game so students are abiding by those rules, and how we can play the game so as to keep the game interesting and engaging for all students. Now, before we do that though, I think we need to gather on up. So, Knights of the Rep table, unite! Knights of the Rep table, unite! And can we all gather on up and stand six feet apart from one another? Brilliant stuff, folks. Thanks for doing that. Now, even before the game begins, we suggest that you have all of your students walk through each of the activity stations, okay? That way, they have an opportunity to read through the different activity sheets and get a little bit more comfortable with what it is that they're about to do. Once all of the students have walked through all of the stations, you can then have them gather on up, standing six feet apart from one another, and you can practice each of the activities. So you can practice squire squats, you can practice nightly high knees, you can practice all of those different fun things, okay? All of this will get students more comfortable with what it is that they're about to do, and it will also maximize the amount of time that they, they have getting active and have, having fun. Okay, because if they're in the middle of the game and they're like, I have no idea what I'm doing right now, the game will have to pause, you know, explanations will have to happen, and they'll be consistently reading each of the activity sheets whenever they get to the station rather than doing the activity. Um, so just taking this time out at the beginning of the game will help you while the game is going on, and it'll help the students too, okay? It'll also be important that while the game is happening, that you're throwing out some gentle reminders to the students to remain at least six feet apart from one another at all times, throwing a few gentle reminders out there that there should never be more than two or three of them at any given station, okay? Students might get excited and want to move on to a different station while other students are there, or they might be so focused on an activity that they don't even realize that other students are getting close to them or that they're getting close to other students, okay? And that's okay, that's gonna happen. But just throwing out those gentle reminders will be super helpful for them and for you, okay? So while the game is going on, it'll also be important to keep an eye out for students who just might not be vibing with a particular activity, okay? Maybe you notice at the nightly high knees station that there is a student that is growing visibly frustrated because they just don't seem to get it. And they're just like, I don't even wanna do this anymore. Or maybe at that same station, you notice a student who's like, this is way too easy for me and I'm bored and I don't wanna do this anymore, okay? If you ever notice those students, okay, that that's happening, what you can do is you can just head on up to them and suggest an alternative activity, okay? So for the student who was super, super frustrated, um, perhaps you can think of an activity that they were really excelling at, okay, and that they were having a lot of fun with. So maybe they were really, really enjoying armor cleaning. You can just suggest that they practice armor cleaning. You can say, hey, I noticed that you were really crushing it over at armor cleaning. And we need a few nights that are gonna be really, really good at that. Do you think you can continue to practice that here? I want you to throw in some extra practice, okay? And then if you see a student who is, again, that student who's super, super bored, maybe you can offer them something that's going to be challenging for them, but something that they were having fun at, okay? So maybe you noticed that they were having a great time over at Squire Squats, but they were having a tough go of it. You can go up to them and say, Hey, you know, I realized maybe, maybe you're having an easy time with this, but I noticed that squire squats was a bit tough. And if you feel like you need an extra challenge, well, how about you give me two stations of squire squats, okay? How about you do this for even more time? Show me that you can do that, right? And then maybe they'll take you up on that challenge just as that student who was growing frustrated says, you know what, yeah, I actually will really excel at armor cleaning, okay? I wanna do that. 
The trick here is just offering them a different activity so that they're still getting active, that they're still having fun, and that they're feeling a sense of accomplishment. The type of activity they're doing is not so important. That they're getting active, having fun, and feeling a sense of accomplishment is. So if we can do that just by switching up the activity, fantastic. Let's go for it. Now, if you want to mix up the game for all of your students, well, we just have a couple of suggestions for you. Say you've gone through one rotation of all of the activities. Well, maybe on the second rotation, you have students gallop to each new station, okay? That way they're getting in even more activity and having a little bit more fun in between stations. And if you're thinking, actually, I want to add in even more of a challenge for them, well, maybe you can extend the amount of time that students spend at each station, okay? So initially we have it set up so that students spend 60 seconds at each station, but maybe you up it to 120 seconds. So they're spending two full minutes practicing each activity. That'll definitely be a challenge for some, which means that it could be very, very fun for some, all right? So those are just a few suggestions we have for you, but if there's anything that you think you can add into this game that'll make it more challenging, more fun, that'll get students more active and get them feeling a greater sense of accomplishment, well, we say go for it, okay? So that's the end of our tip list, which means that we're at the end of the rep model and therefore the end of our video, okay? Now, before we all head on off, I think we need to gather up one last time as members of this rep table, okay? So, knights of the rep table, unite! Knights of the rep table, unite! Knights of the rep table, unite! And can we all gather on up and stand six feet apart from one another? Brilliant stuff, folks. Thanks so much. I, and that's why I wanted to gather you on up just to say thank you. Thank you for following along on this video. I uh, hope you found it useful, and I hope you have a great time playing Knights of the Rep Table with your students. Please feel free to check out our website for even more games from us over here at Asphalt Green, and we'll catch you the next time.